I'm really happy to introduce someone who we've had as a guest on the agenda a couple of times in the past few years because uh, she knows a lot about real estate. Devel Morrison is a broker with Bosley Real Estate Limited, but she also runs an association for owners of Airbnbs in, as they call it, the county. And if you know <laughs> what the county is, you don't have to say Prince Edward County because everyone just calls it the county. Am I right, Devel? Yeah, that's very good, Steve. Have you been there? Have you uh, visited the county? Have I visited the county? Come on, man. I've been to the Royal. Um, I've been to the, uh, oh my gosh, what's it called now? What's the hotel in Picton called? The Royal Hotel. The that's Royal right. Hotel. Yeah, I've been, I've been there for dinner. I've stayed overnight. Uh, I've gone to the Jazz Festival in Picton. Uh, what else? Yeah, I've hung out in the county. Sure. I mean, I'm not one of the beautiful people like you who do it, but, uh, you know, I've, I visit. <laughs> Okay, that's good. That's great. Well, we wanted to have you on the radio this morning because, um, well, this is interesting. We talked in the last segment about the fact that artificial intelligence was helping the Beatles stage a reunion 50 years after a piece of music that they worked on, uh, you know, they've discovered now, and they've used artificial intelligence to help bring John, Paul, George, and Ringo back together again. But mm. you, in the Airbnb world, are also turning to artificial intelligence to do something as well. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So, I mean, I think obviously there are some scary aspects about AI, but AI can be useful. So, you know, some of the things people are using for AI right now on the Airbnb front is to make sure that, you know, they're, they're not, their guest isn't running a party house, uh, you know, preventing guests who are under the age of 25 who don't have a history of reviews from making bookings, again, because they're concerned that they're going to have a party, um, preventing people who renting in the same town where you live. Again, concerns of those people running a party. I mean, people running party houses in Airbnbs is it's bad for the owners. It's harmful for the neighbors. It's just bad all around, right? Now, help me understand this, because I, th I thought when you do Airbnb, you obviously have to give them a credit card, which it would seem to me would be pretty good incentive not to trash the place, because if you do, they've got your credit card and they're going to charge you for it. So how do, how do these risky business parties happen, get out of hand, and, and do the people who do this get away scot-free? Yeah, I would say for the most part, they do get away scot-free. And I mean, at the end of the day, they give a credit card. Um, they could damage a house. Like there have been cases where they have caused serious, serious damage to the house. So the Airbnb has to kick in and uh, give some money to the owner. So that insurance has to kick in to fix the house up back to the state that it was before. So it, people running party houses, not only are they, you know, creating a lot of damage, but they're unsafe. I mean, there's condo buildings in the city of Toronto where there's been shootings. Oh my goodness. Okay. So it's not good. This is this is horrible, no, right? Darn, absolutely. Now, let me follow up on this uh, artificial intelligence angle, because I gather what happens is you input information into the artificial intelligence algorithm, and it kind of spits out a risk level. You know, given all of these factors, here are the risks you are taking by renting to this person. Is that kind of how it works? Well, I mean, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, usually what Airbnb is doing is they're actually just saying like, this person can't rent. It's not even giving you a risk factor. It's just mm -hmm. saying this person is not qualified to rent. Ah. Because for a lot of us, we are on, um, you know, we just confirm automatically that people can book. So the way that the AI is working is it's not allowing those people to confirm automatically. I see. Now tell me something. Um, when you do Airbnb, do mm -hmm. you ever rent to a first time um a first time client in other words someone who's never done airbnb before this is the first time they're trying it I do I mean at my rentals I do run to first time rent to first timers but usually you know we're not getting the parties however sometimes we'll get someone to say oh you know I, I I'm going to organize a stag at for my girlfriends now, I mean, this is terrible that I'm saying this on the on national um, Tom Bergeron is radio, but out we don't want stagats. And you know, a lot of my the a lot of my oh, the other other owners also don't want stagats. We find that the stagats get a little bit unruly, <laughs> and uh, the girls drink too much. <laughs> so it's not just the guys, eh? No, <laughs> the stagats are a problem too. Hmm. Yeah. Now, how much? How much of when this happens? I mean, uh, obviously, when somebody wants to rent with an Airbnb, they don't say, oh, incidentally, I want to have a risky business party and have 200 people over into a 1,000 square foot apartment. They don't do that. So no, they don't. How do you, you know, what kind of, I guess, what kind of uh, 
mischief are you concerned about taking place when people say, oh, of course, we're going to be wonderful tenants and we're not going to be a problem at all? Well, I don't want them to be so so noisy that they create a burden burden to my neighbors or my other guests. Hmm. So that those are some of the things I don't want. But it's interesting, you know, because as a, an Airbnb investor, I also don't buy party houses because I don't want those kinds of guests, right? So I'm not running a four bedroom house where chances are someone is going to want to throw a party. Right. My place in Prince Edward County, I mean, it's couple friendly, right? There's one bedroom, so you're not going to throw a party there. However, because we have a number of units, that's when some people are like, oh, we want to have a stagette and have all our guests stay at your places. And I'm like, mm, no thanks. <laughs> but I guess there's some clues here, right? If you've got somebody from Toronto who wants to rent a place, an Airbnb in Toronto for just exactly. one night, I mean, that's exactly. a pretty good indication that malfeasance is in the air, right? Absolutely. And quite frankly, I've heard from my friends who tell me their kids are going to Airbnb parties because some other kid has gotten a hold of their parents' credit card, oh boy. booked a place, and then all the other kids in Toronto now know that they can go there to party. I mean, when I was a kid, it was all about, oh, whose parents are out of town? We're going to go party <laughs> at their house, right? <laughs> yes. But nowadays, they just it, be, it becomes open news on social media and 200, 300 people show up. Exactly. Like, it's just a much different time than when we grew up. Right. Okay. A couple of minutes left. Let's touch on one more thing. That's that's uh, uh, the, the Airbnb uh, artificial intelligence story. But cottage country, I wanted to talk about the fact that there are some municipalities in cottage country that are now bringing in new regulations that make it harder for owners to rent out their cottages uh, because the permanent residents in those areas are worried about some of the things we just talked about and the yep. cottage owners themselves are really very unhappy about the fact that their hands are now tied with their own property. Help us understand what's going on here. Yeah. So, I mean, I think this is really unfortunate because I think that cottaging in Ontario has really been something that rich people have been able to enjoy. And there's a lot of other people who are not rich, like myself, that also want to enjoy the same experience. And so that means those of us who are not rich, we either want to purchase a cottage and rent it out so we, we can make some money and make it more affordable for us, or we want to go to a cottage and just rent it for a week because that's all we want and that's all we can afford to do. So I think it's almost like this snob factor, I think, that's creeping into cottage country where people are just like, oh, we just don't want those people here, hmm. right? And so, sure, they can blame it on parties. But, you know, as we were just talking about, owners don't want parties in their places either. Nobody wants the parties. Right, right. right. And and I, I think I've seen some municipalities bring in regulations that now say, if you're going to rent out your cottage, you must do it for, I don't know what, like at least a week or something like that. You can't do it for, for just a weekend, with the thinking being somebody who's there for a week isn't going to be having a risky business party. Whereas if you're there for the weekend, maybe there's a greater chance of mischief happening. Is that right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, all across Ontario, there's so many different rules coming into play um, for short term rentals. And so in Prince Edward County, there's licensing, but it's not egregious. You pay your, you, you know, you pay your, your amount, you have your inspection, it's great. But like, for example, in tiny Ontario, their rules are becoming extremely strict and extremely egregious. And so in some of these areas in Ontario, you've got these areas that are creating these rules that are really not that fair. And it's only because you've got this small group of people running council or this small group of people complaining and getting their way to say, oh, we don't want those people who you know need to rent out their cottage to make money. Hmm. Well, we've talked on television and now we've talked on the radio and I'm so yeah. glad we have. Devel, thanks Absolutely. for joining us this morning here on AM640. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. That's Devel Morrison, broker with Bosley Real Estate Limited. She also runs an association for owners of Airbnbs in, as they call it, the county. Prince Edward County to the rest of us. Okay, let's take another break. And when we come back, we will revisit some of this week's biggest news stories. Keep it here on AM640.